Greetings as we gather together for the Tuesday edition of our 2022 Holy Week readings. Holy Week readings are a long cherished custom within the Moravian Church. They invite us to walk with Jesus during the events of the first Holy Week. Our readings include a harmonization of the accounts of the four gospel witnesses that record for us the events of the first Holy Week long ago. And as we share together in these readings, we are invited to imagine the scenes unfolding before our eyes, imagine ourselves walking alongside Jesus during the events of the first Holy Week. Highlights of today's readings include Jesus' enemies laying a trap for him about paying taxes. Jesus offers dire warnings for religious hypocrites. We meet an impoverished widow who Jesus will lift up to us as a hero and example of faith. And Jesus will offer warning signs of the coming end of the age. Now, the readings themselves were recorded earlier in the midst of the height of the pandemic. And so hymn verses will be spoken rather than sung. You might find it helpful simply to listen to the readings as they unfold, but if you have either a brown or purple copy of the Moravian Holy Week reading manual and would like to follow along, page numbers will be listed in the comments section below this video. So now let us quiet our hearts for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, as we come before you and seek to share together in the events of this Holy Week long ago, we pray that your presence would draw near to us, that you would allow these words that perhaps we have heard many times to be heard with a new freshness, and that we might hear a personal word for us and take it to heart. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. The readings of Tuesday continue. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He, who, he with you deals bounteously, highly favored Church of Jesus. He chose you through mercy free to show forth his matchless praises and rich fruit, blessed for the master's use, to produce, to produce. The Parable of the Wedding Banquet Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who he had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them, the king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. And then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Sing to our God a song of cheer and thanks that all may enter here. Our doors swing wide to welcome all who come responding to Christ's call. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? 
and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. One who in self-righteousness fixes any hope or stay has not on the wedding dress and with shame is sent away. To the hungry, weary heart, God will food and rest impart. A question about paying taxes. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one. But you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. O Jesus, highest treasure, in your communion blessed, I find unfailing pleasure, true happiness and rest. Myself a willing offering, I give to you alone, because by death and suffering you did for me atone. A question about the resurrection. The same day the Sadducees came to him, saying there is no resurrection. And they asked him a question, saying, Teacher Moses said, if a man dies childless, his brother shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us, the first married and died childless, leaving the widow to his brother. The second did the same, so also the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died herself. In the resurrection then, whose wife of the seven will she be? For all of them had married her. Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the son of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is God, not of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. Lord our God, Lord our God, may your precious saving word till our days on earth are ended, light unto our path afford. Then among your saints ascended, we for your redeeming love shall raise ceaseless praise, ceaseless praise. The Great Commandment. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Then a scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all of the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Grant that we may love you truly. Lord, our thoughts and actions sway, and to every heart more fully your atoning power display. A question about David's son. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. But the large crowd was listening to him with delight. Bliss beyond compare, which in Christ I share. He's my only joy and treasure. Tasteless is all worldly pleasure. When in Christ I share, bliss beyond compare. Jesus is my joy, therefore blessed am I. Oh, his mercy is unbounded. All my hope on him is grounded. Jesus is my joy, therefore blessed am I. Woe to scribes and Pharisees. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do. For they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled and all who humble themselves will be exalted. He to the lowly soul will still himself impart, and for his dwelling and his throne will choose the pure in heart. Lord, we your presence seek. We ask this blessing true. Give us a pure and lowly heart, a temple fit for you. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven, for you do not go in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross sea and land to make a single convert, and you make the new convert twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the sanctuary is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the sanctuary is bound by the oath. You blind fools, for which is greater, 
the gold or the sanctuary that has made the gold sacred. And you say, whoever swears by the altar is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar is bound by the oath. How blind you are, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred. So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it, and whoever swears by the sanctuary swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by the one who is seated upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup, the plate, but inside they are full of greed and indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may become clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of box, bones of the dead, and of all kinds of filth. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your ancestors. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how can you escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town, so that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Pekiah, whom you murdered beyond, between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Lament over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again till you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Day of judgment, day of wonders. Hark the trumpet's awful sound. Louder than a thousand thunders shakes the vast creation round. How the summons, how the summons will the sinner's heart confound. See the judge our nature wearing, clothed in majesty divine. All who love the Lord's appearing then shall say, this God is mine. Gracious Savior, gracious Savior, own me on that day as thine. The Widow's Offering. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of those who are contributing to this treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, 
has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. Jesus, what offering shall I give to you, the Lord of earth and skies? My soul and body now receive a holy living sacrifice. Small as it is, it's all my store. More should you have if I had more. After Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. Although he had performed so many signs in their presence, they did not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And so they could not believe because Isaiah also said, he was blinded their eyes and hardened their heart so that they might not look with their eyes and understand with their heart in turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw his glory and spoke about him. Nevertheless, many, even the authorities, believed in Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess it for fear that they would be put out of their synagogue. For they loved human glory more than the glory that comes from God. If Christ is mine, let friends forsake and earthly comforts flee. For he, the giver of all good, is more than all to me. Summary of Jesus' teaching. Then Jesus cried aloud, Whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me sees him who sent me. I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in the darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day, the word that I have spoken will serve as judge, for I have not spoken on my own. But the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. Hark, my soul, it is the Lord. He's your Savior. Hear his word. Jesus speaks and speaks to you, my poor sinner. Love me true. Jesus foretells the end of the age and the destruction of the temple. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the building of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting at the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will that be, and what will be a sign of your coming and of the end of the age? The signs of the end. Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. 
So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and the wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. O oh, teach us all your perfect will to understand and to fulfill. When human insight fails, give light. This will direct our steps aright. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another, and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Church, rejoice, raise your voice, sing Jehovah's worthy praise, extol his name forever, laud him, our God and Savior, proclaim to every nation the tidings of salvation, bear the witness to his greatness, spread the story of his glory to the earth's remotest bounds. So when you see the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place, as was spoken of by the prophet Daniel, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. The one on the housetop must not go down to take what is in the house. The one in the field must not turn back to get a coat. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For at that time there will be great suffering, such as he has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days have not been cut short, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce great signs and omens to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Take note, I have told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will the, be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. The coming of the Son of Man. Immediately after the suffering of those days, the sun will darken and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. When he who is our life appears to take the throne, we too shall be revealed and shine in glory like his own. Like him, we then shall be transformed and glorified 
for we shall see him as he is and in his light abide. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. This concludes our Holy Week readings for Tuesday, 2022. We offer our special thanks to our readers, Jeannie Carruthers, Connie Kinsey, and Brenda Parrish, who were recorded as part of our 2020 Holy Week reading services, and also offer our special thanks to our technician, Jaden Stearns. Now, for those of you who are in our area who would like to join us for live in person for our Wednesday Holy Week reading services, we will be gathering at seven o'clock in the chapel of Janaden Hut in Moravian Church. And we will also offer an online option like this one as well. On Thursday, Maundy Thursday, those in our area are invited to gather in person in First Moravian Church of Eurexville for our joint Maundy Thursday service. This service will be live streamed on this same YouTube channel where it will also be available for later viewing. And on Friday, Good Friday, those in our area are invited to gather at Fry's Valley Moravian Church at 7.30 p.m. That service will also be live streamed on this same channel and available for later viewing as we gather together to remember the events of Good Friday. And now our benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.